Hey, welcome back, everybody. Back problems are among the most common medical complaints from patients. Dr. David G. Rubin joins us today to discuss how minimally invasive spine surgery addresses many back problems, maybe some issues you're having. David, thanks so much for coming in today. Really appreciate you stopping by. Thanks for having um, me. Let's first talk about defining minimal, minimally invasive spine surgery. What does that mean? Well, I think it's important anytime we talk about back problems and spine surgery uh, to mention that most patients that see us don't actually need surgery. Oh, but okay. for the few that do, minimally invasive spine surgery is the use of new techniques, new technologies, and, and newer instruments so that we can make very small skin incisions, minimize the destruction to the surrounding tissues, like the soft tissues and the muscle of the spine, and still get to the spine to do the surgery that we need to do. Yeah, how does that differ from, like, what happens whenever there's an open surgery? Well, there's a lot of differences between MIS yeah. and the traditional open surgery. In a traditional open surgery, we'll make a large incision okay. uh, over, over the spine, and then we have to mobilize all that soft tissue and the muscles uh, that, that, that surround the spine so that we can get to the spine and get direct visualization of the spine. That causes a lot of trauma to the, the muscles, as you can imagine. We have to uh, cut all the attachments of the muscles to the bone, et cetera. It can lead to a lot of blood loss, a lot of pain postoperatively, et cetera. And my S surgery aims to avoid all that. And there's actually been a lot of medical studies done that have shown that uh, there are advantages to this MIS approach. There's less destruction of the muscle and patients have less pain postoperatively, so they're using less narcotics. Okay. Uh, they're getting home with a faster recovery. Sometimes these can be done as an outpatient, so they're leaving just a few hours uh, after their surgery. Uh, if you make a small incision, there's a less risk of infection, which is always important. Certainly. And of course, cosmesis. If you have a small incision, it's much better than having a large scar on <laughs> your back. Yeah, no doubt. And also faster too, right? They can be. They there is a learning Learning curve to these uh, procedures, but they can be faster as okay. well. Okay. All right. How's it possible to perform surgery on a spine without cutting that muscle and, and soft tissue? Well, like we talked about, the traditional surgery does. Uh you do have to cut muscle, move it out of the way yeah. to get to the spine. The idea behind these, the MIS uh, surgery and, and some of the most common techniques that we use actually just dilate the muscle out of the way. So we'll use uh, a small retractor, uh, tubular retractor. It's really no, no bigger than the size of my thumb that gives us access through the muscle to the spine so we can perform the surgery that we need to. And when we remove that tubular retractor, you can actually watch the muscle come back together and go uh, back to its original wow. position. What are some of the uh, different procedures that are being done with minimally invasive spine surgery that are helping people out there. What are some of the problems they're experiencing that this is fixing? Well, because of the successes in MIS surgery, they really have expanded it to almost all aspects of spine surgery. And most commonly, people are getting spine surgery done for degenerative changes. These are age-related changes. It happens to everybody in their spine, but some people are unlucky. Uh, and these, these changes, like bone spurs or herniated discs, can occur that push on the nerve roots. Yeah. And, and some of those people don't respond to the conservative uh, therapies, whether it's epidural injections or physical therapy or a chiropractor. And they do end up needing surgery. And we can do uh, MIS techniques to remove herniated discs, uh, to relieve spinal stenosis. Uh, that's when the spine spinal canal gets narrowed from these degenerative changes and pushes on the nerves. We can fix that using these MIS techniques. Uh, and even larger surgeries like trauma where there's fractures in the spine or scoliosis. What about uh, hardware? You know, hardware can be used obviously with the open, but you can insert it in, but with minimally invasive, how do you guys insert hardware or is it possible? Uh, it is possible and I think it's probably the best application okay. for MIS surgery. Uh, traditionally, you know, associated when using hardware and fusion surgeries, it's it's associated with long hospital stay and a yeah. lot of post-operative pain. Uh, with MIS techniques, we've got special instruments. We use uh, navigation to help us uh, during surgery. We're actually able to do uh, some of these spinal fusions for patients that have instability in their spine. Maybe their degenerative changes are so bad that they have abnormal movement uh, in their spine. That can create a lot of back pain. It can push on the nerves in the back. Um, and, and that may need to be fixed with a sp uh, spinal fusion. And we can do that with minimal invasive techniques. We're actually doing some of these as an outpatient oh, wow. in otherwise healthy patients. They're getting their surgery done, a spinal fusion, and they actually walk out just a couple hours later, not even an overnight stay. Before we go, uh, tell us about the seminar that's about to be coming up. Good. We have a seminar. It is uh, this Tuesday from 11.30 to okay. 1 at St. Vincent's Hospital. I'll be talking more about MIS. Wonderful. Well, thanks so much for coming in today. Appreciate really appreciate it. you stopping by. Thank and you. And if you have any questions, of course, you can always uh, go to this seminar or contact the folks over there at Legacy Neuro Neurosurgery. They're in uh, 8201 Cantrell Road, Suite 265. Call the number on your screen to set up an appointment.